In this video, I'll be showing the application of minimum release rules within REST-SIM. This is a very simple model that I had developed, and right now I have it in what's called flow-through. And if we take a look at the plot, we're actually starting right at the top of conservation, which is elevation 75 feet. And I have 500 CFS coming in to the reservoir, and I'm just passing that to hold at top of conservation. So to show the application of a minimum release rule, first thing I want to do is go into um, Edit Reservoir Properties. And I want to put in a minimum release rule of 150 CFS. I'm only going to put it into the flood control zone. So I do Add New Rule. I'm going to call this Min 150 going to have it just operate from the reservoir and it's going to be a very simple release function. I'm going to make it a function of date which may, and I'm just going to have it um, all year round. I need to specify a limit type of minimum and I'm just going to make it 150 cubic feet per second all year round. I'm going to apply it and hit OK. Now to see how this behaves I need to go in to my alternative and do an edit on the look back. Because right now I'm starting at the top of uh, conservation, but I want to start in the flood zone. So I go ahead and save that. And then what I'm going to do is compute the model. Okay. Take a look at the results. So what you see in these results is um, that minimum of 150 really doesn't make any um, difference to ResSim because it's only found in the flood zone. Um, so since we're starting in the flood zone, ResSim wants to get back down to the top of conservation as quickly as possible. So basically the minimum release rule that's in the flood zone is really just going to be ignored. If there is, uh, if that's the only rule, then it's going to want to put out as much as it possibly can to get back down to top of conservation as quickly as possible. So you can see here that it puts out 10,000 CFS uh, for a period of time. And the reason why it's 10,000 is because that's the physical capacity of the outlet that we had specified in this model. So we have 10,000 CFS. and um, as soon as the simulation begins, remember anything that's behind this vertical dashed line is the look back period. So as soon as the model begins, it goes uh, straight up to 10,000 and it releases 10,000 until it's back down to the top of conservation pool. And then it goes back down to zero. We can look at the physical data just to verify that we do have the 10,000 CFS maximum capacity. So actually the minimum release rule is really only going to make a difference if it's in the conservation zone. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this rule to all my zones and then I'm going to start the simulation in the conservation zone. And remember top of conservation is at 75 feet. So we can apply that. I'm going to edit my alternative and I'm going to start at 73. Now if we didn't have that minimum release rule, ResSim wants to hold on to as much water as it possibly can when it's in the conservation zone. So basically it would release zero until it got back to top of conservation. But since it has a minimum release rule, it's going to have to put out that, that 150. So we'll go ahead and run this and then we'll take a look at the results here. And you can see that um, when the model begins, if we didn't have that minimum release rule, it would go all the way down to zero and actually it would rise more rapidly to top of conservation. Um, in this case though, we do have a minimum of 150, so it does have to satisfy that. So it'll hold the 150 until it reaches top of conservation. And then if there's no other rules that are going to govern, um, or force it to do something different, then it will just release inflow. And remember, the inflow is 500, so it is releasing inflow. By the way, the dark line here is the inflow. 
and the green line is the outflow. So you can see at this point that inflow is matching outflow as soon as it gets back to top of conservation in order to be able to hold top of conservation. So that's a pretty quick um, explanation of how minimum release rules behave in ResSim. I'll be adding uh, more videos to show how maximum release rules work and um, how ResSim handles if you have a combination of minimum and maximum release rules. Um, feel free to visit my channel. I have a link to my channel on the ResSim blog. This is the address for the ResSim blog. Uh, feel free to go there and it actually links to my channel and you'll be able to find these videos as I put them up. Uh, feel free to also to subscribe to the channel um, and that way you'll uh, find out when I've put new videos on, on the channel. Thanks for watching.